Okay, so in this lecture, we're gonna go over two different topics. So one, we're gonna go over the different layers of the heart, and two, we're gonna go over the pathway uh, in which blood circulates uh, through the heart. Uh, so the first thing for the layers, there are three main layers. You have the pericardium, the myo, and the endocardium. So generally speaking here, the pericardium is gonna be this part that's here on the outside. So I have this blue line here. So going from in this direction, that's what, where the pericardium is. And then this part that's here in the middle, this is the, the muscle of the heart, that's the myocardium. And then the innermost layer that's here in purple, that's what the endocardium is. So let me, let me write that out already here. So the myocardium is the muscle and the endocardium is the lining, so the lining, the inner lining of the heart. Okay, so then the pericardium, it's divided into a couple of uh, different layers. So if you remember from last semester, we learned the difference between the visceral and the parietal layer. So what is the visceral layer line? It lines the body cavity or the organ itself? So the parietal layer is what lines the body cavity, and then the visceral layer is what's directly on top of the organ itself. So considering that, this layer that's here in green, that's what's gonna be the parietal layer. So we call that the parietal, the parietal pericardium. And then the part that's here in blue, this is what is the visceral pericardium. So this part that's here. And the visceral pericardium, it kind of folds to form the parietal layer. And then what's the fluid that's here in between them? Do you remember that? The yeah, the serous fluid. The, so there's serous fluid that's found um, in between here to prevent any friction between these different layers. And there's also another name for the visceral pericardium. So they call it the epicardium. And the last layer of the pericardium is what we know as the fibrous, the fibrous pericardium. So that's this part that the squiggly line here that I have in black. So this is kind of like this thick, um, dense connective tissue that's uh, connect, connecting the heart into its surrounding organs where, where the lungs are. It's, it's a protective layer. Okay, so any questions here for the layers of the heart? Okay, so let's move on to the pathway of the blood flow. Okay, so you've already uh, familiarized yourself with the anatomy, identifying the structures. And so now we're gonna kind of uh, put it together and see where this blood is uh, flowing through um, within the heart. So what I have drawn here, this is a schematic representing the heart. So the different parts of the heart. So the atrium is what's here on the top and then the ventricles are here on the bottom. So you have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and then the left ventricle. Uh, these boxes here, this is what is going to represent as the lungs. Okay. So the right atrium is what's going to receive deoxygenated blood and it receives deoxygenated blood from a couple of different sources. So we're gonna write that here on the board. So the first one that it receives blood from is the superior vena cava. So it receives it from the superior vena cava coming here on the top, and then what's directly underneath it, that is the inferior vena cava. Uh, two of the other uh, places where it receives blood, it receives blood from the coronary sinus and then it also receives blood from the right cardiac vein the right cardiac vein is what empties directly into the right atrium okay so i've already said there's deoxygenated blood that's dumped into here and where do we need to get this blood to in order to oxygenate it in the lungs so we're trying to get to the lungs, and then from the lungs we have to get back into the heart at the um, left atrium, okay? All right, so let's 
um, start filling this in. <coughs> so we have the right atrium, and then from the right atrium, within uh, we then get into the so five. So I'm going to write right atrium here. So right atrium, which then goes into the right ventricle. And it has to travel through a particular valve. And this valve is what's known as the tricuspid valve. There's also another name for it. We call it the right atrioventricular valve. Hence the name, right? This is the atrium, this is the ventricle, so we just call it the right atrioventricular. Okay, so then once we get to the right ventricle, we, are, we now need to get it to the lungs. And so it travels through what's known as the pulmonary trunk. And it travels through another particular valve uh, going from the ventricle to the trunk. And it's known as the pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay, so then uh, once we get to the pulmonary trunk, from there we now need to get to the pulmonary arteries. So there are two of them. And the definition between arteries and veins, so arteries go away from the heart and veins go toward the heart. So from the pulmonary arteries, we then get into the lungs. And within the lungs, this is where a gas exchange occurs. So we are, this is how we exhale CO2 and then we inhale the oxygen. So there's an exchange of those gases. And this gas exchange occurs within the lungs at this capillary bed, which is known as the alveoli. So I'm going to write here in red now, because we're now in the alveoli. Once we get into the alveoli, where those capillaries are, this is where uh, blood is oxygenated. So then, now we need to get back into the heart, into the left, so from the alveoli within the lungs, we need to get into the um, left atrium. So let me, so left, so alveoli, we get into the left atrium. I'm skipping this step here. We travel through the pulmonary veins. So the pulmonary veins, that's what's going to lead into the left atrium. So remember the definition, arteries go away from the heart and veins go toward the heart because the pulmonary veins are dumping oxygenated blood back into the left atrium. So then, in order for us to get from the left atrium to the left ventricle, we have to travel through another valve. So this is known as the bicuspid valve, or it's also known as the mitral valve. And another name, right, similar to this one, instead of the right, it would be the left atrioventricular. Okay. So then, now to get from the left uh, ventricle, we have to go through the um, ascending, the ascending aorta. And there's another valve which is here. It's known as the aortic semilunar valve. So now we have oxygenated blood traveling through the ascending aorta, and we're getting it pumped to the rest of the body. And there are a couple of uh, different vessels. So uh, one of the vessels uh, that branches from the ascending aorta, so you have the right and the left coronary arteries, because obviously the heart needs its own blood supply. So this is where it's going to travel. And then in order to get the blood to the rest of the body, it travels to the descending aorta. It travels through BCS, so the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid, as well as the left subclavian. 
All right, so any questions regarding the pathway of the blood flow? No? Okay, so one other thing that I'm going to mention is that, so if you notice here on this diagram, I drew the left side more, it's real thick compared to the right side. And so whenever y'all are doing uh, the dissection today, the first thing I want you to identify first is the apex of the heart. So you'll identify the apex to kind of orient yourself and see what you're looking at. And then to determine what's right and what's left, you look at the thickness of the wall. So the, the left side, so I'll put this over here. So the right and then the left side. So the left side is more thick. And the, the reason that it's more thick is because think about this is where we're pumping the blood to get, to get it to the rest of the body. So that heart muscle has to work hard in order um, to get it out. All right, so that's going to do it for this lecture.